inside America's boardrooms. The informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to look at the Main Street Investor Survey and how it can help boards focus. And joining me is the head of the organization that did the survey, and that's Cindy Fernelli, who's the executive director for the Center of Audit Quality, otherwise known as CAQ. Welcome, Cindy. Thanks, TK. It's great to be here again. Well, it's a pleasure to have you back. So you guys have done this survey for nine years, I that's think. That's right. So it's, again, it's called the Main Street Investor Survey, and it's a lot of interesting findings about investor confidence and key players in the market. So let's start by just sharing with the audience a little bit about the survey. Sure, I'm happy to. So as you mentioned, since our inception at the CAQ, we thought it was really important since part of our core mission is investor confidence in our capital markets to see what investors felt about our capital markets. And so I think what makes our survey somewhat unique is we talk to Main Street investors what I like to call the men and women on the street. So these are individual investors as opposed to institutional investors. And so we asked them four key confidence questions. How much confidence do they have in US capital markets? How much confidence do they have in markets outside the United States? How much confidence do they have in audited financial statements? And how much confidence do they have in publicly traded companies? So we have now nine years worth of data on that, which is pretty exciting. And then every year we do a deep dive into a particular question. And so um, I'll tease you a little bit and tell you that our survey this year, we looked at the investor of the future or millennials. Uh, millennials, uh, that'll be interesting. But before we go there, Let's um, give us a quick review of the confidence levels because that seems to be one of the key aspects of the survey. It is, and so what we found this year is that investors remain confident. So even with market gyrations, even with things that are happening uh, you know, in the marketplace, they are very confident. So for instance, this year, confidence in US financial market St held steady at 73%, which is the highest that it's been since 2009. It was there last year, but that's a high. And then um, confidence in publicly traded companies also was high at 78%. So even with all that goes on in the marketplace, investors have this core confidence in our system, which I think is gratifying to see. Yeah. So the survey also asked investors how much confidence they had in the number of players and entities. So um, how does that fit in? So we did. We asked, uh, for the last five years, we've asked investors how much confidence they have in the key players in the financial markets. And so for the fifth year in a row, I am pleased to report that auditors, public company auditors, have ranked number one in the entity that looks out for investors' interests. Uh, your viewers may be interested to know that boards of directors had a significant bump this year. And so with the exception of Congress, uh, all of the players saw an increase in confidence uh, with respect to their role in looking out investors' interests. That is a great segue into my next question when you said Congress is the only one. With what we've seen, that's really no surprise. But let's talk just a little about that because that does have an impact. If you just were going with the confidence stuff that you just talked about, we would see a nice spike in the markets. But now when we look at the presidential election coming along, uh, the investors really do appear to be watching what's happening in Washington. They are. They are. I think investors are savvy and smart and aware. And so that is the group, the only group in our list of who they think looks out for their interests that saw a decline. They came in last, and we asked them why they didn't have confidence in the markets, and they pointed to things like congressional bickering, 
the growing divide between rich and poor, the fact that it seems as though Congress doesn't get much done. So that doesn't necessarily bode well as we're coming into the 2016 election cycle. Well, we've seen some of that in the non-political types being elevated so much in some of the polls. So that sort of marries what we've seen in the, you know, following the debates. Yes, so more to come, I'm sure, over yeah. the next several months. So I have a special interest uh, about this millennial. Because um, you have some? I have some. <laughs> I do too. And uh, <laughs> they um, uh, don't like to be painted with a broad brush um, very often, but tell us what the survey information said about millennials with respect to investors. So we too were curious about millennials because we read and hear so much about them in the marketplace. And so we thought, well, let's look at the future with a view toward the future. What do the investors of the future think about our capital markets? Where is their confidence level? And so what surprised me is that with a few exceptions, millennials really aren't different in their views than older generations. They too have confidence in our markets and in the key players. Now there were a few significant differences. Uh, millennials are more concerned about debt. So when we ask them what keeps you up at night, uh, the older generations pointed to things like losing their jobs and being able to afford health care, which were on the minds of millennials too. But their number one concern uh, about investing and the future was their debt, the, and which is probably not surprising given that many of them probably have the student school, loan yeah. debt. The other thing that was interesting uh, is that more so than the older generations, millennials were concerned about cybersecurity. So it hit the list for everybody, but millennials were more concerned about that than the general population. So I thought that was an interesting finding too. Would that be because they're so comfortable with all the devices and everything that happens that just automatically they're more into cyber than say the older generation? I think so, but to me, the fact that they're so facile with the technology, I would have guessed that they might be less concerned about cybersecurity breaches in the sense that they're so used to it and they might not pause and think about it. But no, they thought that that really could be a concern for their, not only their, their bank accounts, but their online banking and just the whole gamut of cyber attacks. They were more concerned about those than the older generations. Well, I can tell you that if it's probably that breaches, if anything, would bring down the system and not make it available to them. Well, that's true. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's the, the core fear is that it's going to bring the grid down and they're not going to have their right. devices. Right. I think knowing uh, both our families, I think that might be the uh, that, reason. That could that be. Yeah, you really have a blogger for a daughter, right? right? That would be her livelihood that that's could go right. down. So you're right. You might be onto something there, TK. Yeah. So how do people, there's a lot of uh, good information in this survey. So how do people get a copy of this, the entire survey? Yeah, we just touched on some of the findings. And as I mentioned, we have nine years of findings. So anybody who's interested can go to the CAQ's website, which is www.thecaq.org. And all of our materials, including the, the various surveys from the past years and this year, are free of charge and publicly available. And we'll make sure that we not only get it on our website as well, so that if somebody wants to link through to that survey, they can do that as well. That would be well, great. Cindy, this has uh, been great. Thanks for joining us again and sharing with us, uh, again, your ninth annual Main Street Investor Survey. And uh, we'll look forward to when you come back for the 10th. And okay, give the that'll information. be a big milestone for us, yes. Yeah. So that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.